ladies and gentlemen. I would like to talk today about the changing face of politics and democracy and how our approach to the Internet will define our political futures. It does not take a rocket scientist to realize that politics in the 21st century is changing fast. We only need to turn on the television every evening to, or click on the internet to see a 24-7 political communication reality. The days of deals brokered in smoke-filled rooms by a small group of white men who would not wish to bother the electorate with these details, these days are over. And while the middle class are growing in many Western democracies, the so-called political mainstream risks to be squeezed by the extremes. The simple truth is that media and internet are one of the elements changing the face of politics and democracy. The question I would like to address today is how, as liberals and democrats, do we maintain our values and export them to the new digital age? Change can be daunting. The pressure to adapt, innovate and change constantly increases. The easy solution would be to resist change, become protectionist and argue in ever stronger terms that everything before was better. By the way, this is how some people reacted to a steam engine. There were protests and we would call today fake news was spreading. Some argued that traveling faster than 30 kilometers per hour is unhealthy for humans and that the noise would terrify livestock. And the same happened when Mr. Benz first tested a car in the streets around 100 years ago. So, what is the role of politicians in all of this? As I said, I strongly believe that our political response must be to embrace change and resist the political rhetoric of fear and isol isolationism. But we also need to be able to filter out the dangers and agree on reasonable rules that the digital industry would follow. Sometimes I say that we have to ensure the rule of law in the digital world. If we want to harness the technological revolution, there is no other way but be part of the progress and take the risk to innovate. We should not be afraid, but we should understand those that are afraid. Many can feel confused just because of technological change, do not understand the digital language, fight to lose their jobs, find themselves in the state of some new type of social exclusion. We discussed this before at the round table and we spoke about the matter of generation conflict. Maybe, maybe it's generation, maybe there are some wider reasons, but uh, the people fear about technological changes. The challenge for us is to develop and support all technological opportunities, but also to address the concerns of the people and equip them for the change. We also need to reassure people that some key pillars will remain constant. In the EU, I believe we cannot move away from our principles and core values. So our ch challenge is to make sure that we have the right checks and balances. Our political values of freedom and security extended to the Internet. In this context, I would like to talk to you about the role of social platforms in our societies and the rise of artificial intelligence, because these are highly topical issues for us now. First on social platforms. If you turn on a news channel, 
these days. It is difficult to avoid a conversation about the potential impact of social platforms and digital companies on our lives, including the election processes. So, I am sure you understand my concerns are bigger than about receiving targeted suggestions for Christmas shopping. My experience with the big internet players is that they did not, from the beginning, completely grasp their responsibilities, but they were always fully aware of their powers. That is why we have to work with them to address the problems and to use the powers and tools at our disposal to make sure we have the checks and balances in place. As an example of what can be done, let me tell you about my experience on working with the tech companies on fighting online hate. This is personally very important to me because at the bottom of all forms of hatred is the fact that people are targeted purely for who they are. No matter what they do or what they say, they are targeted for who they are, something they can do nothing about. And the effect of hate speech on freedom of expression cannot be overstated. One third of journalists say they self-censor because of it. So, I had no doubt that something must be done, and something must be done quickly. Already at the end of the Second World War, the philosopher Karl Popper beautifully described the paradox of tolerance, in which he argues that accepting those who are openly intolerant in fact diminishes tolerance. And therefore, defending tolerance requires not tolerating the intolerant. I have tried to open the way by first addressing the dissemination of racism, xenophobia and other forms of illegal intolerance online. These acts are illegal and already punishable under criminal law in all member states, be it offline and online. By committing to the code of conduct, which we have firmly encouraged them to adopt, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and Microsoft have agreed to work with us to ensure that this illegal content is removed from their platforms upon notifications by users, trusted flaggers or public authorities. This self-regulatory tool has proven to be effective. The takedown rates have doubled in only six months, from less than 30 to almost 60 percent. And we will continue to monitor progress made by the online platforms and assess whether additional measures are needed. I want to be well understood here. Additional measures in the sense of legislation. And we know that Germany already adopted the law with obligations and sanctions. We will monitor closely whether this is needed for the EU. The time we will assess this and make the final decision in the Commission is spring 2018, so very soon. We still get worrying news, the latest being YouTube failing to stop videos of children being commented on by pedophiles while letting advertisements appear alongside them. Our work needs to continue and we must be stronger again in fight against these things. We have also recently launched a public consultation on fake news. I have previously said we must not create a ministry of truth in the EU. To paraphrase Orwell, believe me, I do not want to be a big sister. On the other hand, we need to address this at, as the debate about Russian-based activities that affected important events in and beyond the EU should be a wake-up call for all of us. Now let me touch upon the race of artificial intelligence and robotics. I will look at it from the legislator's point of view. 
even though it would probably be much more interesting to discuss the fascinating opportunities this technology can create. The legal framework on liability needs to be further clarified. Consumers of innovative products and services must enjoy appropriate protections and remedies. Companies must know who needs to foot the bill if anything goes wrong in increasingly complex value chains reorganized around new business models. This is why we have launched preparatory work on the liability challenges of emerging technologies, notably the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence and autonomous systems. Beyond, the Commission will also, in the first half of 2018, look comprehensively at ways to make the most of artificial intelligence of, in Europe. And when we start talking about robotics and artificial intelligence, we should have a deeper conversation about our core values and fundamental principles. We have to develop the right policy response to this and as a matter of priority, bearing in mind that we must not stifle innovation, but that there are ethical aspects that should be built in from the very beginning. Europe should lead the way for transparency and ethics in this innovative field. Ladies and gentlemen, I have shown through examples where I see the future of the Internet. We have to find ways to work together to make sure that rules apply online as well as offline. We also have to work together to make actors on the Internet more responsible. And finally, we have to keep up with the evolving nature of the Internet. It means upgrading skills of all Europeans, also policymakers, so that we are all better equipped to make use of the opportunities the digital age brings to us and our societies. It would be wrong to risk leaving groups of the society behind in this technological and societal revolution. As liberals and democrats, we can we must contribute by embracing new technologies while making sure that the basic values are applied in the online environment as well, or even better, as they are offline, and that the checks and balances are in place. Only this will also increase the trust of citizens in democracy, which will change together with the technology. I believe we are best place to play this role. Thank you for your attention. Thank you once more, dear all the leaders, dear delegates, honorable president, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. About 300 years ago, when the first successful piston steam engine was invited, the world was a very different place. For innovation to happen, people came together, shared thoughts and ideas on different issues. Few of these ideas survived the evolution cycle of cultural change. Piston engines turned into trains and industrial machinery, which changed human humanity forever. The global position started growing fast. People began to move into cities where possibilities were larger. The foundation for our current model of life and innovation was set in an ecosystem where people had to actually meet in a physical space. To understand how the innovation happens, we have to look closely at spaces where it happens. The quality of these spaces is very important for the ideas born in them to be successful. One can easily track the birth of the French Enlightenment movement to a small cafe in Paris. In a modern world where the internet is the backbone of our 
information age. This is not that easy, anyone. There is a whole new domain for innovation to happen, the cyber space. The likelihood for different ideas to meet each other is far greater than meeting a specific person on the stress of cafes in Paris or any other global capital. The Rousseau's and Jefferson's of today may meet Snapchat or any other social platform we use today. Therefore, making the possibility of new ideas is a bigger than it used to be. Some people think that the amount of information is a problem. There is just too much of it. While yes, there are some issues to be solved, but we don't see this as a problem. Rather, it is possibility that makes new ideas and connections possible. We have to remove all possible barriers to content creation and sharing, to make new ideas and innovation happen. The free flow of data is the socio-economical foundation for innovation and new business models to prosper and grow. In today's world, regions are competing over talent. The new generation of digital nomads could live and work in places that offer the best possible conditions for positive change in their own lives. They used to choose the physical epicenter of the globe. But in the digital age, that it's must, much less important than before. Innovation can be made from where every people are located. To help these changes to become a reality, we must guarantee to access and ultra-fast connectivity to these networks to, to all citizens, regardless where they live or how wealthy they are. In Estonia, for example, internet is considered a basic human right. The singing of the Tallinn 5G ministerial declaration and the 5G roadmap are only small steps, steps towards the gigabit society. The ever-growing amount of data flows help us to build up new business models and new ways of interaction in our society. Most of these models are trust-based. In our 20 years of experience of building a digital society, we see that building this trust needs education, culture, and, of course, time. In Estonia, the private sector paid for the digital education of about 10% of the society in the 90s. When the society learns about the new tools they can use, they are less likely to mistrust them and to change they represent. We need to educate the society to use the Internet in a smart and safe way across the EU. And of course, building to trust needs a little bit of tech magic. Blockchains and digital ID, for instance, to ensure the transparency and accountability. Many claim that digital is a new vector of risk. Yes, it is but the risk can be managed. Cyber threats will be there and must be dealt with. Even in Estonia, we have roughly one cyber attack attempt per second. It is a fact of life. We simply have to deal with it. We have agencies for that, and we must take care of our cyberspace, as we take care of our streets. We must protect our citizens online, as we protect them offline. This is what the state is for. The EU is here to provide safe environment for the citizens and companies to work in. We must provide a trust platform for the high dynamic innovation environment. Hopefully, the new EU cybersecurity strategy and its action plan can fulfill these goals. The internet and new ways of exchanging information are also changing our administrative structures and are transforming them to a more and more network-based culture. Dear ladies and gentlemen, 
The network have another controversial and important feature. The cost of having an administrative structure as a network is actually much, much cheaper than having in Liner 1. This means that we need policy models could and should be based on collective intelligent model, a model where every part of the system is uh, contributing a little bit to make the system work. We cannot implement policies 4.0 with a decision-making system 1.0, dating back to the industrial age. Participation must be made easier than it is today. On the 29th of September, the heads of the EU member states gathered in the Thailand Digital Summit to discuss these issues and build this trust in person. The main outcome is not only in pushing the digital agenda forward, but in the high priority of all these matters on all levels. Still, we have to use the internet to bring us out of the digital to the real world. While living in digital age, we must not forget that actual physical discussions, I believe that the ideas shared with each other over a cup of coffee are still more valuable than most of things online. So let us also find enough time for that. I thank you for your attention.